Hello, what's up? This is W. Mortimer here. Um, wanted to discuss the film you have just watched. Sort of like a Q&A session, but um, there's no one here to ask me any questions. However, I do know what question you would ask if you were here, and that would be, what the fuck was that movie I just watched about? Um, don't really know myself. It wasn't about anything. It, wasn't, it didn't have a plot. It definitely was not a traditional story, but um, it was about a real person. Uh, I worked almost an entire decade in mental health, and I met very many interesting people, and this film was about one of these people. and. Um, you know, not every single thing in the movie was true. Um, I had to fill in a few blanks myself. Um, the the guy was real quiet, and he he had, he asked very little questions, and he he told stories, did very very random stories, just out of nowhere, and they were usually pretty fragmented and didn't have a point. And uh, that's kind of like the scenes were, and the um, section where he's in the shower and there's a voiceover and he's talking about circumcision and when he's talking about Noah and the ark uh, later on when he's writing in the pad. Um, I got that from him saying one time, I, I asked him, well, first off, I couldn't imagine this dude having a job, period, and holding down a job. He was just so out there. But um, he, he told me that uh, if he could have any job that he wanted, it would it would uh, be a comedian. And I, I said, what, what comedians do you like? And he, he says, I don't know, but I think ancient history is really funny. So that's... Why I chose to uh, make jokes about um, the Israelites, it's not that I have a problem with the Old Testament or the Jews or religion or anything like that, but I was watching this episode of Ancient Astronauts one night and, and they were uh, talking about stories in the Bible and how it could have it could be uh, reinterpreted as, um, you know, not angels or God doing certain things, but aliens. Uh, so they gave me an idea that, you know, if someone is so hung up on UFOs and aliens and stuff, they probably researched this. So uh, I don't know. I just. You know, when you when you read stories in the Old Testament, I mean, you kind of wonder what what do they really mean? Because some of the stories are just so out there, and they have a million interpretations. So I figured somebody that was mentally ill would have a really obscure look at these these stories. And and if you were to try to make jokes out of them, what uh, what could you? make a joke out of that would be funny but only for someone who was not quite there and that's what I come up with because um, it, it was actually questions I had asked myself before and anyway that, that's how that come about and um, when he throws the tantrum in the kitchen and talking about tasers and stuff uh, he really did have his tasers taken from him at uh, one point. He had uh, hung out all day waiting for his mother to come home from work and he, he was hiding behind bushes and he was dressed in military fatigues and painted his face up, uh, camouflage, you know, to hide in the bushes and everything and when his mom got out of the car, this God, you know, jumps out of the bushes and tases the shit out of his mom. <laughs> that's that's one of the uh, reasons he was put in the mental health facility. And um, 
he, he threw a fit one day because his mother caught him up and said that she had thrown away all his tasers and all his road flares, flashlights, knives, all the, you know, shit you can order out of a magazine for, uh, you know, like survival out in the woods and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, this his uh, he, he never said anything about railroad tracks um, that I just wanted to use that setting because it was isolated and I didn't have to worry about cars or people fucking the shoot up with their noise and asking questions or cops coming around asking if I had a film permit because um, I, I didn't it's, it was just a movie I did for fun. It wasn't, it's not to be taken seriously. Um, this is the first time I've had a chance to act as a major character in any of my films. So um, I just chose something that I was familiar with and that I thought that I could pull off. And I thought that I could imitate this guy okay. And that's how, that's how the story got chosen from the dozens that I could have picked from. Um, he, he did say that uh, he had left um, jars of sperm out in the woods behind a log in case um, the aliens or extraterrestrials, whatever you prefer to call them, wanted to make a clone of him. So I, I put that into the story, and uh, he, he did uh, say that he thought government people were following him around, and he was really paranoid about that. And uh, he s said that um, there were certain medications that helped him think, and I. Uh, I chose Adderall because that, that is kind of a, a thinking medication. Uh, it does actually accelerate your brain and a lot of college kids use it to study for tests. You know, they'll take a Adderall and study all night and they'll absorb every piece of information they read. So that's why I chose that particular drug. I don't remember the drugs that he was actually given. Um, plus I can't go too much into the actual real person because I, I don't want to violate the, the HIPAA laws. That's why his name was never mentioned and, um, you know, I, I kept it legal. <laughs> um, uh, the, uh, the ending, I chose the ending like that, the, the, the guy didn't kill himself, but a lot of people that are paranoid, delusional, schizophrenic, it, they have a high suicide rate. And that actually is a possible ending for this person. I, I hope I hope not. I hope that all the medications are working and everything's going well for the guy, but it is possible that people like this eventually kill themselves because their delusions just get the best of them. And uh, I thought that would be, instead of leaving it open as this guy's life is, you know, I decided to give it an ending because it's a movie and I wanted it to have an ending. So I chose uh, suicide. But it's not suicide for depression or, or whatnot. He, he was trying to bluff his way into having these people come down from space and rescue him. You know, putting back together in time to live and he could go to their planet and obviously that didn't work um, but that, that's what the film is about it's just about a person I knew and I pieced together a story from some of the things that he said and uh, some of the things that his, his family said that he did um, other, other than that, I really do not know what to say. 
that, that's about all I can tell you. You have to use your imagination and fill in the gaps and, uh, and you know, think for yourself what it would be like to have, have these kind of thoughts going through your head all the time and, and think that your destiny was to uh, you know, go into outer space and be an entertainer for extraterrestrials. I mean, I hope you enjoyed the film. If not, tough shit. I enjoyed making it, and I enjoyed working with all the people that helped me put the film together. I, w I wanted to thank um, my wife for helping me make the film. She helped with the camera and gave me a lot of emotional support, and I wanted to thank Stephen Way, the editor, for doing a fantastic job on piecing this together so that it flows like a story because the whole thing was improvised. I didn't have a script. I just made each scene up uh, weeks apart from each other. I would just think, what, what do I want to film today? And then I got tired of filming and thought that you know I had enough footage that something could be pieced together, but I had no idea how I wanted it pieced together, so I just gave my editor total freedom of uh, you know making a story out of what I'd shot, and I think he did a spectacular job. Uh, I would also like to thank Felicia, my co-star. She did a fantastic job acting. Uh, her character was also based on a real person, and uh, she did a great job of imitating them. Um, also, I'd like to thank Red for um, helping me with the lighting. Um, I had forgotten a lot of rules of lighting since I took lighting classes over a decade ago. So she kind of updated me on what I needed to do to get a certain look on the uh, interior shots. Uh, she was actually in a part of the film that got cut out because originally I wanted the film to be just a little over 10 minutes long and then it was over 20 minutes long so we had to cut it way back um, so that so that her scene got cut out and some of the dialogue with uh, the Clarice character was modified instead of it being a 10 minute long scene it was cut down to about 4 uh, I would also like to think Tyler at the Ajna Offensive Records. He uh, gave me permission to use some of his band's t-shirts in the film and to use the band's music in the films. Also the bands were fully aboard this. They gave Tyler their blessing to allow this and uh, I think their music fit into the context of the film very well. Uh, Thanks to the bands, they were, they were very supportive. I was actually in contact with the band Head of the Demon throughout the making of the film, and uh, they were very excited to be a part of the film. And uh, if you're watching this now, I hope that you enjoyed it, and that I hope that you think that your music wasn't wasted. I hope, I hope that this uh, was a good experience. For, for you um, and uh, I would like to thank most of all my longtime friend Roy Bearden he um, executive produced the movie I was in school during the making of the film and I was short of money because I had to buy books and pay tuition and he, he um, donated me money for the production, and uh, that, that was a big help. So, horns up to Roy. Um, but that's about all I have to say. Uh, I hope, hope you liked it.